Hi guys, welcome to Coding Ambitions. Today we will discuss about Amper, a new project configuration tool from JetBrains. It is a really cool tool. So maybe if you are an Android developer or Kotlin multi-platform developer, you will be working with the Gradle, right? But in your day-to-day -day job or your work, you will be using the Gradle setup and configuration or all those things. That, that is a little bit complex. It takes time to configure the projects using the Gradle. Sometimes it's not that easy like to understand for new developers so the that setup like that was a little bit tidy so that so amper is a step in that direction to ease that process the configuration process configuration setting up the dependencies and all, all all those other things so setting up of those required earlier a little bit effort but now it will be we can do that in less time less time and using just the declarative way just like from the Android XML layouts, we have moved to the Jetpack Compose declarative UI. Similarly, from the, that Gradle, now we will be moving to the Amper very soon in the future. So Amper is currently experimental, but you can try it. So it provides a declarative way, right? You just need to declare the dependencies, what you want to use and what setup you want to do, what are the product type, all, all those things. You just need to mention the rest of the work will be done by the Emperor. So it uses Gradle as the backend and YML file as the front end. So this is a simple project which I have opened here. It, it is an actually sample of the Emperor. If you go to the GitHub documentation of this, you will find the sample, right? So I will go over through them. So what are the old steps? They have mentioned here what are the required things you need to set up. So basically it is based on the module. So a module is a collection of like source files, source resource files and all few other files, the main entry point, all those files, the resource is a, sorry, the source is a collection of those files. And each module includes module.yml file, right? This file defines the configuration. Now we don't need to, the, all the Gradle related things will be defined here. So currently it is based on Gradle. So still we need to set up few things in Gradle like settings. Only this file will be used from the Gradle side, settings.gradle. And we just need to apply this Marvin URL and then this Amper plugin. So there are two ways actually if you want to use this plugin. So you can uh, use it in IntelliJ as well. I will show you. But this is the uh, uh, fleet ID. I have opened this fleet ID. So if you don't know about this, you can check out it on the searching the JetBrains fleet and you can check out my video on this as well. I have prepared the video on this. So you can check out that as well. So if you are using the fleet, you don't need to do anything for setting up the Emperor. It comes by default with this plugin. That plugin is bundled inside this. But if you want to use the IntelliJ, so then uh, you need to set up one plugin. I will show you. And plugins and there you will file, find Amper plugin. So I have already installed it. So you can then install this plugin and then you can directly do that development with Emperor inside the IntelliJ as well. You don't need to use Fleet then, right? But still, I will recommend using the Fleet. Fleet is currently in preview, but still you can use that. I am also started using that, so I'm not facing any problems there. But here you can face some problems, right? So I would recommend you using the Fleet. Also, Fleet is the recommended ID as well, as well by the Kotlin team. So let's come to the module file. So basically, if you see the project structure as well, uh, if you see, this is the Android app. This is the module file for Android app. Then this is the iOS app, module file for iOS app. And this is the JVM app. This is the module file for the same. And similarly, this is the shared module, the common module, and this is a module file. So each each module has its module file, right? That is the manifest file, right? For module. And also you can see source code is this is the common one, and then this is the source for Android. This is the specific code specific to Android, and then uh, th it, these are similar to like we used to do the Android main in the old project structure which we used to do in Kotlin multi-platform and then the iOS main inside the common 
and then similarly JVM main inside the common main. So these are those kind of project structures. But now they, they have moved it to source at the rate platform qualifiers, right? You can find them easily. Similarly, test then test for Android iOS JVM, right? So this is the project structure. If you go, even if you see, this is the expect class, and if we see its implementation, you will find. So you can see usage three implementations three actuals so three actuals you can go you can check android ios jvm right there you can write the actual code okay cool and now let's come to the uh, first of all let's come to the shared module.yml file right so here you can define the uh, common things like product so what is the product product can be if I search here, it can be lib, right? If you see Android app, even if I search, like it can show you Android, iOS app, JVM app, a library. So this is the library actually, like the KMM library. This, these are the apps, multi-platform apps. So these are, this is the library. So these are the product types here. You can use according to your choice, whatever you want to do. So this, this is used for like creating the libraries. And if we specify here, this is for creating the Android app. Android module in the Kotlin multi platform, right? Similarly, this library and its platform, it can we can specify all the so this library will work on this platform. We can specify here and then the dependency section. So, here we can specify dependencies. If you see, it's using dollar compose, it means it's using the catalog, so it is using the compose catalog and picking up the dependencies from there, right. So you can so these are the dependencies we can use from there but even we can mention the dependency directly as well like this you can see like this and similarly we can specify them here as well if you see it will suggest you like get or if you want to set up right so get or client code this is the version right and also if you go here and if you see it specifies scope as well scope can be compile time run time and all so it will be you should aware about this like compile time if dependency is used at compile time if run time dependency is used at run time if all dependencies is used at both compile time and run time right you can specify scope and few other things like exported there are many properties here available you can try out with them and we can also specify the version here right so this is about the like how we can specify dependencies here right and then if we want to these are the common dependencies if we, even if you want to specify platform specific dependencies we can specify them here right as we specify in the uh, if you remember in the normal build.gradle we, we specify the common main these are the common and if we specify android main the main these are the android one these are the similar to android main right these are similar to the common main right if you see dependencies it specifies like for each target you can see here jvm ios x64 and all other targets right so and similarly then setting section right so inside the settings we can specify compose if we can this this way we can enable the compose and if we go even here so it one thing you'll have to remember in the yml syntax is it is the space based so if you will see one space less yeah you can see if space is not equal here so in the second time instead of tab it uses space counting of space should be the same if you see and that standard should be followed everywhere if you are using two space for each new line then we should use two space for each new line otherwise it will show error now it will show invalid block mapping key indent so this is because indent based so yml file is indent based if a little bit indent is less or more so it will show you error you can check out its documentation like 
how we can declare by EML files. So then it comes to the settings. So we were discussing about so if we need to specify something at this level, second level. So we what we can do is we will go here at the same level right here. We can see it specifies Kotlin inside that Kotlin language version. We can specify here. It suggests us all versions which are available, right? And then let's say it we can enable Android related things here like compile SDK. We can specify that here. And if you go here, if you check iOS related dependencies as well, we can specify. Is static, you know, with those we were specifying in the build or gradle. If you remember, framework dot is static true, all those things we can specify here. So, shows no definition by this way. So, these are the few things we can set up. And if one more thing, I will show you. Let's undo it. So, if you see, these are the common settings. If you have not specifying any platform qualifier, these are the common settings. They will be applied to the common module for all, right? And if we want to override, let's say we want to override the Kotlin version, right? For the iOS. If you see, it show you like for Android, for iOS, for JVM, let's say we want to for us yeah 60 architectures if you want to we can do that using this way so now here we can override this specific for the ios or even if you want to change the version for jvm we can specify kotlin version different different for different platforms this way we can specify settings as well for each platform dependencies as well for each platform if we don't spe specify any qualifier platform these are the common similarly settings dependencies and similarly we can use test dependencies as well the way we are specifying these dependencies we can specify test dependencies as well you can see here it will suggest you all dependencies get or host test can specify them here right and if you see test dependencies as well again the same things if you want to specify for android this way if you want to specify for common they will be the simple one so similarly for each section for each module module for each product like let's say this is the module file for each config setting so we can specify them independently for each platform as well for the common module as well right and then it comes to the one more option we can specify here packaging if you see packaging it specifies but maybe it's yeah it's not yet implemented so currently it's not implemented two things like packaging and publishing they are not yet implemented but like publishing is like how we used to publish maven libraries we can specify the maven section group id artifact repository url credentials all those things they will be available as well similarly packaging options will be available by default it will be so for jvm app as jars but if we want to customize that in some cases we want to do we can use like packaging type we can specify type here instead of jar we can use fat jar so all those things we can specify here right so similarly these plat multi-platform configurations we just discussed again dependencies we have already discussed so these are the few things uh, this is the if you remember i just discussed version catalogs so compose version catalogs even we can specify from custom project catalog as well right Similarly, the settings, we used settings as well. So I think we have covered almost all things here. So did you like it? Yeah, I, I liked it very much. Emperor is really going to be very interesting. 
Now we can go through documentation as well. I also have explained few things how we can use them. And even if we try to run it for the running part, so you can see the all modules are here. If we run it iOS app, it will run it. And one more thing is very interesting. So for iOS app. Now it's not using the same old project structure, the complete iOS app. We just it just requires one iOS app dot Swift file that is mandatory. Inside that it will be setting up the like uh, using the V controller and then doing all this stuff, right? This is the V controller that it's using. If we find it, yeah, it is here. Okay. Okay, cool so isn't it cool yeah I liked it so even if the I was just going through the shared module now we can go through these as well so this is for the JVM we need to specify the app type JVM app and here how we can use yeah, this part is skipped so I would like to give some point on this as well so how we can use let's say another module inside this module so we can specify directly the path of that module it will pick up all the dependencies here from that and then again the same things and for ios as well we got dependency we are using the shared module inside this similarly for android as well we will see yeah you can see and then the compose enabled product android type i was just discussing so this is all about guys about this Amper tool. I am really interested in this. I am excited to use it. And very soon I will be creating the project with this Amper as well for complete project for compose multi-platform. But currently it does not support the uh, Kotlin JS or was so maybe in the future it will be supporting because currently it's in experimental stage. But it will be supporting the Android iOS and desktop at least. So we'll be creating a, that project. So. So I will be coming up with that project and I will see you in that very soon. So if you guys have liked the video, please, please, please share, like and comment. If you are new, please subscribe. If you like, share and comment, it will motivate me to create more videos on Kotlin Multiplatform, Android, Jetpack, Compose, Compose Multiplatform, right? All those things. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Now it's time to say bye and I will see you in the upcoming video. Till then, bye bye. Take care. Have a great time. Keep coding.